Hello guys, in today's video we are going to take a look at a few changes that I've made to the RC Tractor Guy library. And what I've basically been doing is trying to update the library so that it suits all the various boards, the various prototype boards that I have here in my office. And as you know, those boards are going up on the new eBay site over the next few weeks. So I've already got the version 4.1 and the 4.2 boards up. I've quite a few version 1 boards to go and then there's a little bit of work to do on the version 2 and version 3 but all will be going up there in the next couple of weeks hopefully. And while that's happening the libraries are going to be updated too so you'll see here that I have pretty much spread everything out for the libraries that I have done and this is basically all the models that I currently have are separated by their different uh, PCBs so most of them are version 1 PCBs. Uh, but there's a few examples of version 4.1 and 4.2 and even the loader is a version uh, 3 board. So a little bit of variety there and a couple of examples to show you today. If we look at the library in the examples uh, section on your Arduino IDE, you'll see that now it's been separated out into the different boards. So previously it would have been uh, headings like RC tractor might have been RC haulage or something like that or maybe RC trucks uh, I can't remember exactly what the headings were but there was a few different headings but what's left here is the A40D so I didn't put that into a section here because it's not finished all that's in that at the minute is a couple of uh, TB6612 FNG motor drivers the excavators they're kind of standalone so far I haven't done nothing with the code for them um, although Though that is the code from my excavator so you can use that if you want or actually that's uh, one of the viewers excavators I think that one but that's my PC 400 there um, the trailers then the trailers are kind of standalone as well so I think there's just a servo in that motor conditioner there's two or three servos in the baler and the cane low loader is just a single servo as well I think so they're kind of standalone there you, you could use some of these boards but they were just done with the uh, Arduinos I think. The trucks one will be going, the trailers will probably stay there and the excavators uh, they'll probably get their own board designation at some point when I figure out what board is in them and write code specific to that particular board. Uh, there's a test program down here I think that was just for testing the NRF, I can't remember what that was, it was a long time ago but uh, I'm sure that still works if it was just for testing the NRF modules. Uh, the Arduino was for any of the vehicles, the very early tractors that would have started out with an Arduino Pro Mini and then that Pro Mini was then wired to a TB6612 FNG motor driver and wired to the NRF separately. So it's not a, well it, it is a PCB but it's not one of my PCBs, it's just a normal Arduino with the accessories separate. So the John Deere uh, 6920S was a pretty early tractor, uh, quite a good one as well. and. That's uh, that's just one of those Arduinos with the separate accessories. Um, it's the same. All all of these tractors are basically like that. The old uh, version of the Massey 8680 used to have two Pro Minis in it, one in the cab and one in the body. But now that's obviously been replaced with uh, one of the new boards because they they have extra pins. So I didn't need two Pro Minis because the my PCBs had the extra pins built in. The same as with the John Deere 8360 RT, so I probably will upgrade that to one of my boards just to get rid of the two, the two Pro Minis. It's kind of no need for that, um, and also I want to have some code for a tract, a tractor, in my examples down here as well. So I'll probably do that with a version 4.1 because I have a lot of 4.1 boards. Um, I don't have too many 4.2 boards. Uh, but that's pretty much all that's in the Arduino thing, so that's probably the oldest code that we have, but still pretty good. The the, the old John Deere 80 or John Deere 9560R code, that's that's pretty good. They were always pretty good tractors and a good starter tractor. So we've covered all these. The first one then is the version one board, and that went into everything nearly. Um, most of my models have that uh, version one board. And there's nothing wrong with that board, only it's a little bit difficult to uh, program. It's not as easy to program as the newer boards because you had to uh, 
connect different wires to it to, to get the connection to program it whereas these you just unplug the the control board from the vehicle and plug it into the programmer upload the program and then just plug it back into the vehicle uh, this you had to well originally all the wires were soldered into them so it, yeah it was very difficult to, to program them once you had them in the tractor but there's a lot of examples there of those uh, of those version one boards the version three board is similar to uh, the newer board but there, there's not as many output pins because i didn't take the uart pins uh, out with uh, the other pins and that was a bit of a mistake uh, it meant that i could connect an ftdi uh, cable but i kind of realized that programming with the ftdi cables can be unreliable when you're plugging in and out of the ftdi cable the usb can just lose connection randomly so it's not the best way the new boards just go straight into a header that you plug into the arduino uno and then you update with the uh, programming over the in circuit serial uh, programming method and that works all the time it's the only time it doesn't work is if if you maybe have a bad connection if you've uh, plugged it in or the connections are dirty something like that so you just plug it out and plug it back in then it works but the, the other thing I've had times when I've plugged in the FDDI cable trying to program these boards and all of a sudden the the USB just stops uh, detecting the FDDI and you have to reboot the computer and that's just a nuisance when you're trying to just to set up a servo or something you, you just want it to be simple so that's the reason why I would have changed that for the newer versions of the boards so they're all basically the same idea so if we open up one let's say uh, well maybe we'll take something a bit more complicated the man truck okay so when we open up our uh, sketch it's kind of the same as before you still have the vehicle id uh, you still all your different variables that control uh, what's happening in the main sketch but then when we come down to our includes so these are all the same as before but now we're calling a library that is specific to the board and then we call the RC Tractor Guy library so what this library does it just translates uh, from what you're inputting here into the RC Tractor Guy library so when you include this library you are basically telling the Arduino IDE that certain pins are already preset and they are preset on the PCB because they're actually physically connected on the PCB so you you can't reassign those pins because they're connected to chips already so there's no point you you having the option to you could of course just directly talk to the RC Tractor Guy uh, library yourself if you wanted and fill in all the extra pins that would be here but there's kind of no point they, they this just already does it for you so if we look at the uh, RCTG version 1 library you, you can see here that it's when you define your pins in the library in, in your sketch this library then calls the standard RC Tractor Guy library and it just fills in these pins that we already know so 94 it's not actually the 94 pin uh, the way I've done it is when it's uh, the first PCF chip that starts at 90 so you have 8 bits there so it's going to be 90 to 97 so they are from 0 to 7 uh, for, that's pins 0 to 7 on your expansion chip your PCF 8574 so that's why we don't need two Arduinos anymore because we have an expansion chip that's given us extra pins so these uh, extra pins here are already predefined uh, on the PCB so we predefine them in the library here because there's no need for you to be setting them they're not going to change and it's the same with this one on the version 1 there's a standby pin on the uh, on the PCB it's built into it it's, uh, it's hardwired there so we just turn that on at the start and then you don't have to worry about that all the other pins can be any pin you choose provided the functionality for what you want is actually physically uh, in the hardware of the IC for that pin but for the most case it's fairly straightforward only flashing LEDs and things like that 
but the benefit of calling this library and this library instead of just making this a standalone library with all the functions built in is that now I can go and change any function in this so say I want a new uh, beacon flash and sequence I, I want it to look slightly different so I can go in change it here and that will automatically be uh, updated up here so no matter whether it's the version 1 version 4.2 version 3 doesn't matter once I've made the change here that change will be reflected in all of the examples so for example for the man truck we had reversing lights so what I did I added an extra pin on the end here for reversing lights so I added that into the RC tractor guy library I updated uh, each of the these version libraries so that it knew the correct pin number but then the function to actually handle a reversing light so to actually turn an LED on when we were reversing is handled in here so now that we have the pins defined if I decide let's say at the minute it comes on instantly when we start to reverse but let's say I want to delay that by five seconds so I can put a delay in this library that says delay that by five seconds before turning on the LED and that will then happen in every example it won't matter what uh, library I'm calling here or even if I'm not calling that if I'm just directly using RC track guy it won't matter they'll all react the same that is the same case with the brake lights so uh, all the libraries already had a pin for a brake light I think it might be this pin here now what I decided to do there is I wanted to make the brake lights go on at 100% intensity when the vehicle was stopped but when we're driving forward or driving in reverse the brake lights go to 50% uh, so they're, they're tail lights basically so all I had to do was create the function in the RC Track Guy library and then all the libraries didn't matter which one of them, which chip we were using whether version 1 PCB, version 2, version 3, version 4, point one, point two, didn't matter all of them as soon as I re-uploaded the code they all had that feature of the the brake lights that, that dimmed or didn't dim depending on what the vehicle was doing so that's a, a pretty big advantage to doing it this way so I've kind of covered the, the extra pins that we added here so the the reversing light was added and also that the brake lights were dimming so there were two features that weren't there previously another change was that the servo limits are now you've three servo limits so you have a lower limit a center point and an upper limit so where previously we only had the upper and lower limit that meant that when you released the joystick on your controller the servo just sat in the center between these two values that's fine if your uh, steering rack your steering assembly is perfectly symmetric and is only going to point dead straight when it's in the central position but depending on how you've created your servo uh, steering assembly your mechanism might uh, take less of a movement to turn right than to turn left and what that meant was the only way to overcome that to get it to be in the center was was meant that the shorter uh, action you were overdriving that so you would drive it until it physically hit the stop and then you had to push it on further uh, or the servo was trying to push further but it physically couldn't which isn't good for the servo so to overcome that there's now a center point so when the joystick is in the center it's going to sit at this value and then between here and here is mapped when you turn the joystick up and between here and here is mapped when you turn the joystick down so that gives you a lot more functionality um, to adjust your steering and it actually makes it a lot easier to um, to set up the steering in the first place it's it's actually much easier to find the center point and then move out than it is to try and find upper and lower limits on their own the next thing down here is on the motor configuration there used to be uh, something like this and 
that zero or one used to mean that you were using the PCF expansion chip, but I kind of don't see the point of it. Um, I've just left it. I've, I've got rid of that option basically. So the board just assumes that you're using the PCF chip all the time, or I mean the library just assumes that you're using the PCF chip all the time. So you don't have to worry about. Yeah, even here's the old code that said, "Do you use that?" So it used to be uh, zero for no, one for yes. We don't need to worry about that anymore. It was the same with the servo. It used to have the uh, comma zero or, or comma one for PCF here as well. Um, the steering configuration. I think this might have been the same because the Impreza uh, used to do this. Um, two is when you don't use a servo for steering, you. I wouldn't advise doing that if you're building from scratch but if you're just converting uh, a vehicle that you've bought like the Impreza was just an RC car that I converted and it used the motor so I just added that feature just to to show how it could be done but I really wouldn't advise that if if you can replace the motor with a servo that's what I would advise you do another feature that I've added is the watchdog timer so Basically what that does, if the chip appears to hang, if the code, well no, sorry, if the microchip itself thinks that the code has hung and it's stuck in a loop that nothing's happening, that will trigger the watchdog timer. See, you start the watchdog timer here and then at each loop we reset it. So if we don't reset this, the microchip itself knows something's gone wrong here and it will reset itself back not just back to the start of the loop the whole thing it will start from the start again now that might mean that you lose connection with your controller but the benefit of that is that all the outputs are going to reset so if your vehicle was driving forward and it gets stuck in a loop it starts to hang somewhere in the code it will just keep driving because there's no signal being sent to the motor driver chip to say it needs to stop. The outputs are probably still stuck whatever way they were when the code hung. So when the watchdog timer triggers, that clears all the outputs. So even if you lose your connection, your PWM is going to stop. So your tractor will stop. So that would just stop it driving off a table or something like that. So that's a pretty good feature to have as well. I think this is the last uh, change. When we're looking at the lights here, there is a, a comma zero here. So what this one is telling you, on the CQ uh, models, when I converted those, the LEDs were tied uh, high. They weren't tied to ground. So that meant you were sinking current through the chip. So that means the current comes through the LED and then goes through the chip to ground. Now, what I usually do in my models, I usually source the current. So, the current flows from the chip through the LED to ground. So, what that means is if I write my code to suit my model and then I put it into a CQ model, then when you start the model, the lights are all going to be on full beam and when you hit the button to turn on your lights, it's going to turn off the lights. So, everything's in reverse. So, all you do to counteract that is you put a zero here if you're doing it, uh, if you're sourcing the current the way I normally do, or if you're converting a CQ control tractor, you would put a one here, and that would mean that the lights should work the right way around, so uh, everything should just work the same. So by having a, a wide variety of models, I've, I've started to add all the little features that that kind of uh, make the difference, make it that much easier, like the the motor steering and the Impreza and the, the CQ lights. Like th Those are things that if you only done one model, you wouldn't think to add to the library. But because we have such a variety of models, uh, we kind of see these extra features. And that's a, that's a good reason to be, you know, you, uh, you, you can get a static model and it take you a very long time to actually convert it. Or you could buy maybe something like the CQ, uh, CQ car or, or any other little thing that's already RC just to practice your programming and stuff like that. 
there's a lot of different features you can add when you're building your own custom uh, vehicles like this so you know having a wider variety of vehicles to start with particularly ones that you don't have to actually do the mechanical side of it can really help you to get an understanding of the code so i i really would advise if uh, you're really thinking of getting into this so maybe buy one or two cheap uh, rc vehicles you know you get them on ebay and aliexpress coming from china for nearly nothing now there's there's 132 scale uh, trucks they, they might not look very good but um you know it's a it's an rc vehicle the the drive motors are there the steering's there they even have a trailer to tip the the all these uh, different uh, things now they're not to the detail of the cq uh, models and it's not the final model but for practice it's pretty good and it's not the it's not the most expensive way to to get started so that's the version one code and when you go to the examples if we go back here let's, let's let's look at the latest code so the only one i have here at the minute is the 8680 uh, the ford county is using a, one of those boards as well i think so let's look at the 8680 so it is basically the same code the only difference is that this uh, library for the 4.2 and the d is for jewel so that's to do with okay that's one thing i should explain uh, on the version one board you don't have a, a shield a motor shield the motor driver and the expansion chip are built into the version one pcb so you don't need to add any different uh, any different code or a special code for that now with the version 4.1 and version 4.2 boards and even the version 3 and version 2 there is a, a shield so you you plug out the main control board and that's the part that you plug into your uh, programmer but then in the what you actually wire to the vehicle is the shield it's the motor driver shield so the smallest one i have at the minute is a dual shield so that drives two motors it has a single tb6612 fng motor driver chip which is capable of driving two motors so that's why this is a d here that's for dual I think I have yes the Fit 939 with the loader has a quad board in it so yeah so this one is version 3 it's the version 3 control board and it's using a quad shield so that shield has two TB6612 FNG motor drivers which means it can drive four motors so that is that is a, a difference there and I don't have any examples of a 4.2 with a quad shield yet i don't think i have any pcbs for a quad shield and i'm not even sure i have a version 3 uh, vehicle with a with a dual shield yet but that's all things i'll try and do at some point so i'll try and get an example with with every possible configuration if i can but just to go back to what i was saying at the start there this uh, this code is basically the same apart from it's calling this different library so if you were to scroll down here uh, you might notice this pin has changed and that is because i swapped the pin pin 9 is a pwm pin so i freed that up in the newest uh, version if you are following the boards that we got made by pcb way in those videos uh, you would have seen that i swapped those pins just so that we could get those extra pwm pins pin 8 doesn't have hardware pwm so we'll just uh we'll just leave it to do this communication with the radio it's, it's not important it doesn't need a pwm pin to do that so that's why we have switched that away but there's nothing wrong with this it just means we're down that one hardware pwm pin but this just gives us a little bit more uh, functionality especially when we move to a quad board with the without that without that extra pwm pin when you're doing the uh, things like the loaders you haven't used software pwm and software pwm is always slower than the uh, the hardware pwm which means you usually see the the jumps in the pwm when the motor's moving especially if it's an led you're trying to flash you'll, you'll almost certainly 
see a little flash at least a little flicker in the in the led but apart from that the the rest of the library is the same it's the same servo limits same motor configuration everything is is identical the only difference is that we're using this other library which has the preset pins for this particular uh, configuration so if you know you have a version 4.2 uh, control board and you're using a dual shield that combination has a specific set of pins already assigned so there's absolutely no benefit to you manually entering them in because inevitably you're going to make a mistake and be left scratching your head at the end of it because it's happened to me many times uh, trying to figure out why this doesn't work and then you go back and you realize you've put in the the pin configuration of the version 3 board or something like that so uh, so this library here just makes life a lot easier okay so that was a pretty uh, intense look at those uh, changes to the library i think i've covered uh, pretty much all the changes there and hopefully it was clear it wasn't too uh, intimidating if you already have any of these uh, modules you should be able to upload your or update your code to the new version if you want there's absolutely no reason if your other code is working well okay the, if, if you have uh, reverse lights or if you want to try out the brake light feature uh, then there's a reason to update the code but always make a backup of your uh, of your previous code and don't delete uh, your previous library so that way you can always roll back to the other library and just re-upload your code again there's no problem there and if you do find bugs and things in the code don't forget to let me know and i can try and uh, sort them out and uh, just to make sure everyone has uh, has the most up-to-date and the most useful code so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed the videos and if you did don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to uh, subscribe and get the bell on and all that stuff and uh, yep that's pretty much it so thanks very much for watching